Hello and welcome to our final video lesson on Chapter 9, Membrane Transport. We'll be looking at acetylcholine release and membrane fusion. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter. Its structure is illustrated on the left of the screen. It's not important you remember the structure of the molecule, only what the molecule does. It's stored in synaptic vesicles. In other words, it's encased in a lipid bilayer, a lipid sac as it were, at the end of the nerve axon. When the action potential reaches the axon terminus, there is a depolarization and that opens voltage-gated calcium channels. As those channels open, calcium floods inside the cell and that triggers the fusion of the synaptic vesicles with the plasma membrane. Remember the vesicles are simply lipid bilayers, sacs of lipid bilayers, and the plasma membrane is also a lipid bilayer. So if we bring those two surfaces together, those lipids will readily associate with one another. It's as if we've turned that vesicle inside out and thereby released the acetylcholine into the synaptic cleft. That synaptic cleft is simply the interface between the nerve cell and the muscle cell. Our goal is to communicate a, a signal from the nerve cell to the muscle cell. As that acetylcholine is released, it binds to receptors on the surface of the muscle cell. Those receptors are highlighted here in green. As it binds to those receptors, that's the signal to tell the muscle cell to contract. We learned in Chapter 5 about how myosin works as a motor protein in muscle contraction and here we're learning about the signal that tells the muscle to contract. This signal is short-lived, partly because the calcium is quickly pumped back out of the cell. In other words, the cell is repolarized so that no more acetylcholine is released and that acetylcholine that was released is quickly degraded. Membrane fusion is important in many cellular processes, so let's look at that a little bit more particularly. There are proteins that participate in tethering the two membranes, the two surfaces. These proteins are called SNARES. That's an acronym for Soluble Inethylmalleamide Sensitive Factor Attachment Protein Receptor. A rather horrible name. Don't worry about the name just the acronym. They're integral membrane proteins and in this case two snares from the plasma membrane and one from the vesicle form the complex. In the illustration on the right as you can see it's alpha helical and these complexes form long coiled coil structure. On the bottom of the slide here we can see that there are two snares from the plasma membrane highlighted in blue and one from the vesicle highlighted in red that form that coiled coil structure. As you can see, these snares may contain a different number of polypeptide chains. You can think of this as an addressing system. It's to make sure that we're fusing the correct membranes. If we fuse the wrong membranes, then instead of processing a protein, we might degrade it. So this addressing system is very important. There are other proteins and processes that are involved to direct this interaction, but it does involve multiple van der Waals contacts. Remember, that's that coiled coil arrangement. It also involves membrane curvatures. Membrane fusion is important in many cellular processes, such as just the processing of proteins from the endoplasmic reticulum to the Golgi apparatus. That concludes our studies in Chapter 9. In our next video lesson, we'll begin our studies of Chapter 10 by seeing how ligands like acetylcholine bind to their receptors in order to communicate a signal to the cell.